The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering would like to present this video on the behavior of beams in bending with different support conditions. We will be applying a variable point load onto this beam at a specific distance from one end. We will also be recording the reaction at the two ends at which the beam will be supported. The support conditions tested will be pinned pinned for beam A or pinned fixed for beam B. The first step is to accurately measure the dimensions of this beam. Use calipers and record the width or B as well as the thickness or H at five points along the length of the beam like this. Calculate the average value discarding any obvious outliers. The beam testing apparatus consists of two movable orange force gauges attached to a sliding rail. These will be holding up our beam during testing. First move the gauges to an appropriate position. You can use the scale on the top rail or a ruler to do this accurately. Note that the span is the distance between these pointed metal supports. Next attach the displacement gauges by hooking them onto the top rail. Attach the hanger onto which the load is applied directly onto the beam. Move the hanger a certain distance from one end and record it. This distance is AL. Attach the third displacement gauge to the rail directly on top of the applied load so that the tip of the gauge rests on the loading hanger. All five gauges in this setup will fluctuate with changing loads. Before you begin the experiment, zero all the gauges. The displacement gauges are zeroed by turning the outside like this. The force gauges are zeroed by turning the knob in the middle, like this. The beam will be tested at loads of 5, 10, 15, and 20 newtons. For each case, add the appropriate load to the hanger. Notice that as a result of this, a load is being recorded on the two force gauges. This is, however, not the correct load as these gauges have also been displaced downward. Reset the displacement on both gauges by turning this screw on each gauge. Keep turning until the displacement gauge reads zero. Now record the reaction force at both ends as RL and RR. Also record the vertical deflection or Y at the hanger. Since this deflection is downward, the displacement gauge is recording it as negative 1.2 millimeters. Repeat this for each load case. Remember to zero the deflection at both ends, but not at the hanger, before recording anything. During each load case, the total reaction force from both ends should be equal to the applied load. Now we will test the same beam under different support conditions. This time the beam will be pinned at one end and fixed at the other. Securely attach the beam to the brace at one end. This acts as a fixed end, meaning that the beam is not free to rotate. However, we cannot measure reaction force. Move the force gauges on the rail so that only one is acting to support the beam at the other end. Place the loading hanger at a certain distance away from the fixed end. Measure the span of the beam, or L, from the inner face of the fixed support to the tip of the pinned support, as well as the distance from the fixed support to the hanger, or AL. Attach the two displacement gauges, one at the loading hanger and one at the pinned end. Just as before, make sure to zero all gauges before starting. Add a load of 5 newtons, and as before, zero the displacement at the pinned support. Record the deflection from the hanger and reaction force at the pinned support. Repeat this for loads of 10, 15, and 20 newtons. In our experiment, we are using a brass beam with a modulus of elasticity of 100 gigapascals. The moment of inertia is the thickness of the beam cubed multiplied by the width divided by 12. Using these, we can proceed to calculate for beam A the theoretical left reaction, the theoretical right reaction, and the theoretical displacement. For beam B, we can calculate the theoretical left reaction, the theoretical right reaction, the theoretical displacement, the moment applied at the fixed support, and the theoretical moment applied at the fixed support. Plot deflection against load like this. If we plot deflection against load for both beams, the experimental values coincide roughly with the theoretical values, which follow a perfectly straight line.